Right, good afternoon everybody. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the graveyard shift, so I have to keep animated this afternoon. Now, I could have come along here and given a talk which was very technical about GB3BH and GB3HV. But then I decided, looking at the fact that it was BATC's 60 years, that we actually ought to start looking about, looking where we ought to be in the next 60 years. So, this is going to participation. You can see what it says on the screen. Is that true? Everybody at home has got more and more toys that do more and more exciting and fantastic things and we are actually competing with those. Where does it leave the attractiveness of our side of the hobby, our ATV? And where is it going to be in the next 60 years? So it's a workshop today. Now a workshop does mean that you have to contribute, and I'll tell you when. So we're going to discuss it and try and suggest some solutions. We're not going to come, uh, come out of the end of this at just a half an hour session with something that completely rocks the world, but we might actually have a few ideas amongst us. All right, just look around the room at the age profile and do we or do we not have a problem? No, who says no problem? New glasses required. <laughs> now then, this is against a background where the RSGB have been extremely successful in getting new members into the society. Okay? Because there's a whole series of licenses that people can go for and they look as if they can achieve something, so they've got some goals to go for. Are we getting an, incre an equivalent increase in our branch of the hobby? No, we're not. Lots of heads being shaken. Okay. Well, we obviously need to do something about that. So, what are the perceived problems? I've got some written down, but if you were not into ATV, anybody suggest from the audience what a problem with getting into ATV might be? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. You can't get equipment anywhere either. You can't get equipment anywhere. It's too technical. It's too technical. No kits available. No kits available. It's too, it's too expensive. Okay, let, let me just take the too expensive one because that's an interesting one. So you've got a young person that's passed their license and they might go out and buy a 350, 400 pound radio set, attach it to a piece of wire and they're on amateur radio. But that wasn't too expensive. So what's too expensive on ATV relative to how much people spend in the other parts of the hobby? Is there per some perception that ATV has to be particularly cheap? You have to build it out of stuff from the junk box. Not really, I don't think we're there. That's what M0 SAT got asked by one of his kids. Why do you need all that junk on the shelf, Dad, when I can see all my friends on my PC? Yes? Well, I'd like to stroll up to an angler and say, what on earth are you doing with one little hook in the river? Uh, why don't you use a hand grenade or a net? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, okay. And what does that lead on to from there? Well, it, it leads on to understanding that it is not just working as many places in high digital colour as you can. It is also about doing what QRPers do, what uh, most people do, use sometimes out of dated mode to get the distance in or to get the excitement of finding someone new 
but you also rely on a, a specific density. Once the hobby falls below a certain density, there's nobody in the area to work. Exactly. And yeah. The more vulnerable modes you have, the less distance you can work and, and meet the next guy. So there was a couple of words probably in, encapsulate, encapsulate that. One was excitement you used, and another one was, was challenge. Okay. Just hold on to those. HF is made more available and attractive to new members. What do they see when they do their RAE course or their foundation course? They don't see an ATV set up, or do they? They do. Where do they display that? When I used to teach RAE, I showed the Ah, but when you used to teach it, what do they see now? Well, they don't do the RAE anymore. Okay. Has... has has something, there's a, there's a, um, a bus or a, a wagon that is called GB4 Fun. Is it equipped with ATV? It has a hat cam. Right, well it should be equipped with ATV, so we need to think about that. We need to show the youngsters. Great. The difficulty with ATV is that the ordinary license, unless he's within the range of a repeater, there's probably nobody else to, to, to work. Or very, very careful. Oh. With, with HF, you'll probably always get a contact somewhere. Right, I take that up. Okay, let's wind the clock back a little bit. When, when I first started in, AT, in ATV in um, around the 1980s, there was nobody else to work. So at one Christmas, there was a competition. There was G8 DXZ, who was uh, in Walton on Thames at the time and there was G8KHW in Surbiton, and the competition was, there was, there was beers uh, as, a, as a prize for the winner for the first person that got on TV, ATV, on Christmas morning. G8DXZ built his setup with a few transistors starting off with a crystal, and a QQVO320 valve with screen grid modulation. G8KHW built his completely solid state with collector modulation. The valve solution won first. It was boxing day before the transistor solution came on and that could only actually transmit for a period of 10 minutes because it then went into DC to light mode and upset all the neighbours' televisions. <laughs> However, we went on from there. The, the point of that is there wasn't anybody in the area to work. So what you did, you went over and helped your friends get on, and they helped their friends get on, and then you get a group of you who are doing the same thing. Now we need to get that spirit back again so that we actually start helping each other get on and, and show what the magic of the hobby is. And that's another bit we need to, need to come to in terms of marketing ourselves. That must be another thing. It's too difficult and far too complicated to get on. The trouble is, with all of us, I think, your, your shack grows very quickly. Even taking Tony G1HBD's van outside, it looks very impressive with a, an array of monitors and a mixer, an a video mixer and an audio mixer and so on. But immediately it looks, whoa, I couldn't do all that. So we've got to make sure that when we make or show ATV off to somebody, it looks simple. So the next question we've got to ask ourselves, if we're trying to encourage people to get into ATV, we've got to actually work out what the benefits are to sell. Now I've only written a few down here, you could maybe think of a few more. Bill, G4BID, people say to him, wow, you can run your own TV station. All right, it sounds a bit grandiose when you put it like that, but actually that's what you're doing. You're running your own TV station. Not something to be sneered at. You can make your own films and show them. Make documentaries and all the material that we've, um, we've got from things that we've done in the past, 
dig them out and show them. Make it interesting for people to watch. One of the problems with ATV, it's almost self-defeating because once you've seen it, you've seen it. So you need to keep material coming forward for people to watch. It may be Joe and Fred having a chat. But if it's Joe and Fred having a chat and showing what Joe and Fred's just been making, that's a bit different. You've got some interest factor there. Linking and networking techniques. Well, that's what we're getting into now. We've got uh, the streaming now, which is getting a lot of external interest um, in ATV. We need to actually bring those people in to do some ATV transmissions. And don't forget, if we all listen and nobody transmits, nobody's on. And that includes giving a shout up on 144750. Well, I was listening and nobody came on, but did you push the transmit button? Oh, no. And it does promote microwave uh, uh, activity and techniques, improving antennas, improving preamps. We do exactly the same sort of things in our part of the hobby as they do in the SSB section of the hobby. And in fact, we've got a bigger problem because it takes an S9 plus 30 signal before we start seeing a TV signal. Yes, Greg? Right, just to interrupt you on that, that point, one of the things that's come home to me in the last year or couple of years in the UK, there's been this dramatic growth in microwave activity, narrowband activity. Yeah. Now, I can't put my finger on the why, but it's certainly there. You read a lot about it. There's a lot of people going out. Even midweek, people are going out because of good condi conditions yes. or rain scatter forecast, and they all get up and go off. Now, there's a passion that's been recreated there. Right. Um, I'd love to be able to do it with parameter TV, but I'm not sure how. Okay. Well, that's something, again, we need to hold that idea um, that there is an increase in microwave activity and see if we can bring those people around to our side of things. Now, there is another possibility that somebody somewhere is teaching people that using bandwidth is a very bad idea. And that may put people off because there's no way our ATV activities can use a 3 kilohertz bandwidth unless we're dealing with the spinning discs, as in next door. Now, another thing, how many people have heard somebody they'd like to work on an HF band, and you get five nine seven threes, and that's the end of your conversation? What we are promoting in ATV is you can chat to people and discuss things, and other people can join in and, and, and look. It's not just an exchange of greetings on ATV. And you can learn something at the same time from somebody else. And as I said, as we mentioned earlier, the video streaming is attracting a lot of interest. So what are our solutions? We've got these OB wagons, which members of the BATC have got. Is there any way we can use those, if you like, as ATV marketing suites? Because we do have to bear in mind that that being a large vehicle, we mustn't put people off that it's too big and complicated. Now, dotted round the country, and I'm a member of one of them, are these video clubs. They make films, which are all non-copyright, and they're documentaries about holidays and things that people have done and so on. If you look at the um, IAC, which is the Institute of Amateur Cinematographers, which is a difficult word to say after lunch, and if you look at that, there's a wealth of video clubs all around the country, and they are supplying or can supply, by asking their permission if you can show the material, providing it doesn't contain copyright music, there's a wealth of material there to put some interest on ATV. And in general, people are 
pleased to actually have you show their films. Amongst us, we can make interesting technical documentaries. And the other thing is, we ought to work much more closely with our local radio clubs. How many radio clubs have we actually integrated a little ATV group into? Or are the ATV, ATVers very separated from the rest of amateur radio? They shouldn't be. That's the important bit, is to get into the schools. We did talk, um, Graham and I, about ATV on satellites. It's all possible, but of course a team of people have to actually build the stuff to get it on there. So that's another thing we could do if we can find the bodies to actually do it. Or we need some ideas from you. So this part of the, the, the session is to try and draw from you ideas, as, as it says on the screen, the future of our ATV is in our hands. So, what suggestions have people got from the floor to actually help get more people into our part of the hobby? Yes, sir. I think there should be more publicity about amateur television amongst the ordinary amateur radio groups. One of the things that I've identified is that most ham radio clubs around the country are always on the lookout for program material, things to do at their monthly, fortnightly, weekly or whatever meetings. And a video, DVD if you like, about amateur television would be an ideal way of filling an evening or part of an evening for a lot of radio clubs because it's a radio related subject right. and it could also be entertaining but it would also of course um, tell people what amateur television is all about but somebody actually needs to make the film exactly. and of course it needs to be made by somebody who's got video equipment and who better but the ATC. Exactly. Now, let's just open that idea up a little bit. Let's suppose we, we've got some people who can go and do some filming, and there are camcorders in the room right now, and we're going to make this promo video for the, uh, to promote our side of the hobby. What should be in that promo video? What, what things should we cover in there? Exciting things. Exciting things, right. What things are, that we do are exciting? <laughs> ah, now, what, what I need to ask of the question which pops out of that is, how many of these young people that we would want to interest in our side of the hobby would be interested in soldering components together? to make something. It's no good putting something in, in a promo video if they're actually not going to do any soldering. Oh, it just so happens that I've just completing, I'm just completing a video on behalf of the Bath Builderthon group. Right. Um, uh, and they've set about introducing people to construction, uh, building kits, of, in this case uh, HF equipment, um, but there are lots of people out there who are interested in building stuff, if only they can have a little bit of a hand to overcome the perceived problems of what they do when it doesn't okay. work. Now if amateur television were to set up a, a build-a-thon uh, with amateur, radio, amateur television equipment, um, that would attract a lot of people, I'm sure, who would like to build equipment but aren't, don't have the confidence to set about a complicated, or at least be perceived to be complicated, piece of equipment that might not work at the end of the day if they haven't got someone to help them sort the problems out. Okay. 
Right. So, we've, we're back again to the same subject, which is kits of, of things to actually build. <coughs> Grant at the back. Hang on a minute, just wait for the microphone to come through. <coughs> Hi, yes, um, Grand Bank Energy ATMX. I, I used to put BATC tables into various rallies. So I've actually spoken over the past 14 years with a lot of members who come to the tables. And first I'd like to reiterate the need for a simple transmitter and a simple receiver, get you going standard, yeah? Yep. So they can get into their local repeater. It doesn't have to be a sensitive receiver or a powerful transmitter. Okay. Now, the remote imaging group do weather satellite receiving. I think. Yeah. And on their stands, there was a basic kit to build the DSP receiver. Fifty, forty-nine pound fifty, or value price forty quid. Right. And people bought these things. BATC has got nothing equivalent like that to offer to get you going thing. I have sold kits from a member who did a basic transmitter. And I had a box full of those on, on the stand, uh, about 50 in, a, 50 in a box, 40 quid each valley. 49 of them went to the valley. Yep, sold, yeah, yeah. sold. So you need basic transmitter for seven. A lot of members, or a lot of ex-members, a lot, lot of visitors were ex-members, unfortunately. And they dropped out as soon as the majority working went up to 24-7. They couldn't get out, location, location, location. Many of them were, just could not see any repeater even one five mile away. They were in a valley, there was trees, whatever. So they just lost interest in ATV entirely. They were active on 70 SEM, but as soon as they went to 24 and above, they physically, unless they put everything into a car and went to a high point, they just couldn't work ATV. Okay. So I'd like to make those two points. Can, uh, can I just uh, g just come on yeah, again from yeah. the 70 SEM side of things? Yes. Are we saying that there's sti we're talking about 70 SEMs digital now mm -hmm. as, as to what we're doing with 70? Mm. Are we saying that really, as far as the basic kit is concerned, because, of course, the digital is still relatively expensive, mm -hmm. are we saying there's still a place for that 70 SEMs analogue transmitter? I, I believe there is, yes. Now, there are people who are still interested in ATV and used to be active on 70 SEM, but dropped out of the hobby entirely when most of the band, most of the activity moved up to 24. Okay. I think uh, Giles wanted to say something. <coughs> uh, Giles Reed, G1MFG. Um, picking up on what uh, Graham said, um, it is worth knowing that when I was selling ATV gear and the <coughs> 23 and 13 SEMS equipment was flying, to this day I still have a box of 70 SEMS transmitters. I sold one. Right. Nobody interested in 70. That was my experience selling. Do we have a selling problem with 70 SEMS then? Uh, with regard to the last um, comment, uh, this is something we've faced the whole time, which is chicken and egg. If there's nobody on 70, people don't buy 70 boxes. If they don't buy 70 boxes, there's nobody on 70. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and it takes initiatives, such as you mentioned, of nucleuses, nuclei, yeah. where you get groups working in an area and it spreads. Uh, I, I've been thinking about this generally about the point of engaging youth or engaging people who are not in what, what is possible that groups could lend out, having checked the person first, equipment, yes. so that they can demonstrate that they can receive at least a repeater from where they live. And that will encourage them to get their own and start on the path. So th there may be a, th a thing there. As far as the argument 70 sem uh, analog dig. The fact is that you may well be working on analog. As soon as you get digital, you'll get dropout and and you've stopped again and at great expense quite often. Yes. So well, yes. I suggest that we we in well I've just lived 23 years in Holland. They're experiencing a, a, a renaissance in 70 SEMs AM because they want to a occupy the frequency and b if they've got people on 70 
it's easier to convert them then over to digital on 70. But if they're not on there at all, yeah. then, then yeah. Both, they lose both ways. So I, I think that it's, it's very important to maintain that area of activity at 70 for the reasons already given. Well, it's, uh, it's certainly um, something we should, we should look at because, as you rightly say, it's easier to get on there. The techniques are a lot easier. Losses are less on the coax. How are we doing for time? Five, Five minutes, okay. Um, gentlemen down here, can we get the microphone down here? <coughs> so I think we're getting a few ideas. We haven't quite finished with what should be in the promo video yet, but I think that's another discussion. Yes. Yes. Um, I think we ought to examine what the word television means. I mean, I mean, <laughs> C.P. Snow said in the early days of television, no good will come of television because it's half Greek and half Latin. Um, <laughs> but looking at the word television, I think there's three things in the definition we need to concentrate on. One, to have television, we need to have movement, we need to have half tones, and we need to have a reasonable amount of definition. Now, I used to work on 70 centimetres analogue, and I got fed up with it, and I haven't transmitted for many years now, because I used to go on contests, and what I used to get, and I can understand this, was test cards with somebody's call sign in great big letters, almost filling the screen. There was no half tones, there was no motion, I never saw a real television image. And I can understand why they did this, because they wanted to score points, but it wasn't really television. I could have sent this by fax, and, and people tend to do this. It, and, and I think we should go back to what television really is. Okay. I, I wouldn't go up to a DXer and say your quality is lousy, particularly if it's been over a long part. That, there, there's two mentalities about this. There's the one of high quality, full on television, looks very attractive, and there's, there's the excitement of getting a signal through, no matter how manky. And that appeals to a lot of people in other disciplines in amateur radio. I don't see where, where it shouldn't apply to us, too. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um. Brian. Thank you. Brian Summers, G GQS. I'd like to put a, a couple of radical ideas for, forward. Radical ideas is what we uh, need. First of all, I'd like to state that um, amateur television is a, a mansion of many rooms. Uh, it's not just 70 cents or 23, it's slow scan, it's everything. Yep. And uh, in order to promote the overall, the basic thing is education of young people. And in order to encourage them to be interested, there has to be satisfaction in the hobby. Yes. And in order to get satisfaction, various people go for RF and contacts and distance, other people build things. It's a many-roomed mansion. But in order to get satisfaction, it has to be difficult. <laughs> my, <Yeah>. my, <laughs> my, my cell phone on my waist is easy, but there's no satisfaction in using it. No. Uh, and in order to get pleasure out of making something work, it has to be difficult. If it's too easy, why bother? Well, I'll just quote the example there. We, um, we We're interested in beginners here. That's why we have the education. Yeah. You've, you've got to spend an awful lot of education with your ama ordinary amateur to get him into digital. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's... Uh, Gently, gently, catchy monkey. Get them on first, turn them digital afterwards. I'm not talking about the digital analog divide. What I'm talking about is obtaining satisfaction from your hobby. Which is a word I'd add to your earlier list of words, is the word satisfaction. And just, just I think, to, to ra round up what you were saying, Brian, which is at the Middlesex show, we used to put on demonstrations of live ATV up and down the... Um, Slough Canal, when the pictures were noise-free, not one member of the public stood round the television. Oh, that's television, and they walked off. Immediately we were displaying a, a P3 snowy old picture that was wobbling around. They all gathered round a huge crowd because it looked difficult. So there we are. Well, I, I, are we more or less at the end of our yep. time slot now? Yep. 
So, uh, although this hand's coming up, like question time, I'll have to thank you very much for your contributions. Anybody with some more contributions, see me outside afterwards. And thank you very much for listening in the graveyard shift. <laughs>